All right, so here is, so in your chapter 15 class notes, I'm looking at the word analysis file. Um, and we're gonna write a little bit of code together in this. I also wanna point out there's other files in this folder um, that are just text files. One is called words, and words is, is a dictionary. It just has lots of words in it, like many, many words in it. Um, I also have the complete text to Through the Looking Glass um, by Lewis Carroll. Um, and I have the complete text to War and Peace by Polstein. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of analysis using dictionaries and using some full-length novels, um, which I think is a cool application of sets. So first things first, um, doo -doo -doo. let's write the method, the first method we want here. Let's write, let's write the read words method first. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of the return null. That was just there so it compiled and we didn't get complaints. Um, this method, read words, returns a reference to a new set and takes as a parameter the file name of the text file to read and every word in that text file we're gonna add to the set. So we're basically gonna add every word in the dictionary to the set and then we're gonna add every word in through the looking glass into a set as well. And it's gonna take like no time because sets are so fast. All right, here's like a best practice that I wanna mention and just be clear like why I'm doing what we're doing here. Um, we know there's a hash set and a tree set. Those are our concrete classes. Best practice in Java says when you type your variables, don't type them to the concrete classes unless you truly need to use unique methods to those classes. Your code is more flexible if you type them to the interface instead. Okay, so in this case, the implementation of the set doesn't matter. We don't care if it's a hash set or a tree set. So we're going to store the reference in a variable of type set. This is something we don't really focus on in AP Computer Science. Um, but best practices say, yes, we're making a new hash set, and that's going to be fast. But the type of the variable words should just be set. You can think about this from the perspective of what if later we decide, oh, wait, we really do need a tree set. We literally change just this one word in our code, and nothing else changes because everywhere else we're just using set. All right? Um, so this is, you know, this is the advantage of using the interface type. In AP Computer Science, like if we were to go back and look at some of our code from AP Computer Science, whenever we're creating a new array list, the type of the variable should really be of type list, not array list, okay? Just at the time, we, we, we didn't know that stuff, so that's fine. All right, we're also going to create a scanner. And we've, we've done that before, but we're gonna actually create a scanner that reads from a file, which I don't know if we did in AP Computer Science or not, but usually we do system.in. We can also just create a new file object um, and specify a file name. And now our scanner will iterate across, will iterate through all the tokens in a file instead of what's typed in the terminal. So super useful. I don't think we did that last year though. All right. With scanner, you might remember that by default, each token is separated by delimiters. And by default, those delimiters are white space, right? So we get kind of one word at a time. That's not quite the behavior we want when we read um, like a novel um, because there's punctuation, there's commas, there's semicolons, there's hyphens, there's periods, um, there's quotes. So we really want to use any punctuation and white space as our delimiters. So we're just gonna change the behavior of the scanner. We're gonna say use any character other than A through Z lowercase or A through Z uppercase as delimiters. Delimiters. And I guess we'll better. So there's a use delimiter method and it takes what's called a regular expression pattern. 
learning regular expressions is totally worth the effort. Um, I use regular expressions all the time, and I'm not even a software engineer anymore. I just use them to like clean up files I get for teaching. Um, so something definitely worth looking into. But here's the pattern we're going to write. Square brackets mean a set of characters. The caret means everything but what's in this set of characters. So everything but the characters A through Z lowercase or A through Z uppercase and one or more of them is considered a delimiter. So now we're truly, as we call next on our scanner, we're just going to get one word at a time. We're not going to get any punctuation. We're not going to get any spaces. Perfect. So let's use our usual like while loop with our scanner. While in dot has next. You might be noticing like, huh, the scanner behaves a lot like an iterator. It is, like it's the same concept, it's the same model. Um, so that's kind of cool, like that consistency. We only really care about the unique words in the, in the dictionary, or, well, that's a bad example, the unique words in, in Through the Looking Glass. Um, but that's where a set is great. We don't need to focus on figuring that out because adding duplicates to a set is ignored. If we add the word the twice or 20,000 times, the set doesn't care. In fact, it's faster just to add duplicate words than to check if they're in the set and if they're not, add them. We'll just add everything over and over again. By the way, so is removing elements that don't exist. Okay, that's ignored too. So let's add stuff to our set. We'll use the add method. And what we want to add is whatever we read from the scanner. Let's, let's make it lowercase. So we're going to take every word, make it lowercase, add it to the set. Cool. And then we have a, and then we'll just return the new set. So this is kind of cool. And in, in not many lines of code here, we just we read every word from a text file and as a result, have a set of all the unique words from that text file. It's like super useful. Questions so far before we actually use this method to read stuff in? All right, well, let's use the, let's scroll back up to the top and actually use the method. So let's read the dictionary and the novel. We'll read both. So we'll create a set of strings called dictionary words, and we'll call our read words method. And the file path is src. Everything is in the src folder, and its words is our dictionary. And now we have a set of all the words in the dictionary, which is kind of cool. And then we'll create another set, novel words, and we'll read all the words in the file through the looking glass.txt. Now we have all the words in Lewis Carroll's through the looking glass as well. And that's pretty cool, but wouldn't it be neat to, let's say first, let's print all the words, all the words that are in the novel, but not the dictionary. And this is really easy to do with sets. Oh, by the way, the enhanced for loop works with sets. Which shouldn't be surprising because we now know the enhanced for loop really just uses an iterator and we can use iterators with sets. Okay. But it makes it easy. For string word in novel words. If the word is not in the dictionary 
set of words. Uh, dictionary words that contains words. So if the dictionary doesn't contain the word, let's print it out. And once you have this, go ahead and run it. Just a few lines of code, and we're printing out every word and through the looking glass that isn't in our American English dictionary. So we're going to notice some like British English words showing up here. But also, given Lewis Carroll, there's all sorts of other crazy words in through the looking glass. So I'm going to hit run here. Leave the code here in case you need to see it. Here are all our words that are not in the dictionary. Some of them are like page numbers in like Roman numerals, but there's all the good words like Jabberwocky and Gimbal and Warple, the Warple Blade. And I bet Snicker or Snack is in here somewhere. Clay, all these ones from the Jabberwocky poem. Oragoves. All sorts of good stuff. Ooh, we are out of time. All right, we will finish this up. Uh, all right, so we've already printed all of the words um, in the novel that are not in the dictionary. So that, that was the first cool thing we did. But to just get some sense of how many words um, were in the novel to begin with, just so for comparison, let's just print that out. So we can do system out print lin, and let's print unique words. And we can say novel words dot size. So the size method wasn't on the slides we looked at, um, but the size method is um, a method available on all collections, almost certain. Um, it just tells us how many, in this case, how many elements are in the set, how many elements are in the collection. So now when I run this, I can see there's 3,260 unique words in the novel. That doesn't, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, I find that kind of surprising, I guess, right? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Um, you would think like there'd be more unique words, but that's a lot of different words. Hard to say. Anyway, I find that interesting. So here's all the words that weren't in the dictionary. Um, and a lot of these are made up words because Lewis Carroll does that. Um, some of them are just leftover formatting things like Roman numerals for page numbers. Um, but still, kind of cool. All right, let's do one more thing interesting with the set. Um, so our, the second thing we're going to do, number two here, let's... Print the number of unique words with greater than three letters. So sometimes we're interested in some sort of a, con a condition as we're iterating through a set. Like not just is it, you know, how many elements are in there, but some characteristic of them, for example, greater than three letters. Um, and this gives us a chance to see what it looks like to use an iterator. When we did linked lists, we used a list iterator. A list iterator has some additional methods that are helpful. Um, for the set, we're just going to use kind of like the, uh, the super class, just the iterator itself. Um, so we don't have quite as many special methods. But sets aren't very complicated, and an iterator is just fine. So let's create a variable of, that is a oops iterator across strings. We'll call that i. And the way we get this is by calling the iterator method on the set novel words. So we'll be iter able to iterate through all the elements in the set of words in the novel. So it's similar to what we did with linked lists, it's just that the method is called iterator as opposed to list iterator because it returns a reference to a new iterator rather than a new list iterator. Um, the structure that we use with the iterator is still pretty much the same. We're still going to write code like while i dot has next, just like we did previously with our other iterators. 
And we're still going to do things like if i.next will return the string as we iterate through the set. And we can get the length of it and say, well, if it's less than or equal to 3, let's remove it. So we're going to remove everything from the set, remove all the words from the set um, that are have less than or equal to 3 characters. Oh, one thing I'm sorry about. i got to fix this. Um, hopefully it's not too distracting. I have a weird font I use that turns things like less than or equal to into like the less than or equal to symbol. You still need to type less than or equal to, right? It's just one of these weird ligatures in the font I'm using. I'm going to make a note to fix that. I'll switch. I need to switch back after summer. Switch back. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I know that can be confusing. All right, so after we do all of this, we can see, well, how many words, how many unique words are in the novel. So unique words greater than three letters. So we'll just call the size method again. So there are 3,260 unique words in Through the Looking Glass. And there are 2,999 unique words greater than three letters in Through the Looking Glass. So kind of interesting. And you could basically take the code we've written and change from Through the Looking Glass to like the War and Peace that's also in this folder. Um, and run this again and get the same, get the values, same statistics for War and Peace. Um, so I think this is kind of a, a cool way to show you like how a set works and why it's useful. Nothing we did, the reason why we used a set is nothing we did here did we care about the order that words were in the novel or the order that words were in the dictionary. We just needed to know did it exist or not. And so a set was a perfect data structure for that.